خلاص the process gland most important things in the process gland number one it lies below the external acoustic meters below the auricle عشان كده لو في باروتيد سويلنج it will raise one of the characteristic باروتيد سويلنج raising the eye lobule which is characteristic that this is a, a parotid swelling the lobule of the ear will be raised indicating parotid number two the parotid duct it arises from the anterior border of the parotid gland it crosses in front of the masseter muscle and then it pierces the buccinator muscle to open into the vestibule of the mouth opposite the upper second molar tooth This is the parotid duct. Concerning relation of the parotid gland, if we do a cut section here, and then we remove the upper part and look from upwards, I will find here a cross section in the ramus of the mandible. And then covered externally by the masseter muscle and internally by the medial thyroid muscle sandwich bone and two muscles and posteriorly also there is another sandwich which is this is a mastoid process covered externally by the sternomastoid muscle and internally by the posterior belly of digastric muscle so the parotid gland has a lateral surface This lateral surface is related to the skin and it also has a medial surface but the medial surface is divided into two parts anteromedial and posteromedial so this anteromedial surface is related to this sandwich 3M masseter, mandible and medial thyroid and also it is related to the timbro-mandibular joint This is why any parotid swelling or infection in the parotid, which they call it mumps, will be silent. Mumps means enlarged, enlargement of the parotid gland. This enlargement will affect the temporomandibular joint. So the eating process will be painful because this is the temporomandibular joint in front of The, uh, it's related to the anteromedial surface of the parotid gland. So I parotid swelling, parotid inflammation will affect the chewing movement. The chewing becomes painful because it's related to the timbro-mandibular joint. Posteromedially, another sandwich which is sternomastoid, and this is the mastoid process, and this is the posterior belly. But there is another person while you are eating this sandwich he is looking to you this is the carotid cheese containing the internal carotid artery and containing also the internal jugular vein and the vagus nerve and the lower four cranial nerves this is the carotid cheese it is related to the posteromedial surface so the posteromedial surface related to this sandwich and this person who is looking at this sandwich antenna carotid, antenna jugular, lower four and this is the carotid cheese also the facial nerve related to the posteromedial surface the facial nerve has the, uh, is dividing this gland into superficial part and the deep part The gland is divided, and this is important that the facial nerve, can nerve number seven, divides the gland into superficial portion, superficial to the nerve, and a deep portion. So the posteromedial surface is related to this sandwich, and this person looking to you while you are eating, and then after eating, you have to remove all the meat between your teeth by this stick. This is the styloid process.
So this is the relation of the anteromedial surface, the posteromedial surface. And do not forget that the facial nerve divides the gland into superficial part and the deep part. The lateral surface which is related to the skin is related to the superficial fascia. And this superficial fascia, it contains the great auricular nerve. It arises from cervical two and cervical three. This is from cervical plexus here. This nerve comes to supply the skin over the parotid gland, to supply the capsule of the parotid gland. This is the great auricular nerve. And also the parotid lymph node. This parotid lymph node lies in front of the parotid gland or inside it. And they drain the middle part of the scalp and the parotid gland and terminate into the submandibular lymph nodes. The parotid gland is covered by a deep fascia which covers it and limits its expansion. This is why an inflammation of this parotid, the parotid becomes swollen, but this capsule compresses it. This is why in mumps, it is a painful condition. If there is an inflamed for this parotid gland, the parotid gland is larger inside and becomes painful because it's compressed by the deep fascia. Also the structures inside the gland, the most superficial structure inside the gland is the facial nerve. Yali, retromandibular vein. And the most deepest structure inside the gland is the external carotid artery. And this is the retromandibular vein. And this is the facial nerve. This is the main content of this gland. Uh, uh, another important thing is, is nerve supply of this gland. The nerve supply, it has a parasympathetic nerve supply, it has sympathetic nerve supply, and it has sensory nerve supply. The gland gets its parasympathetic nerve supply from the glossopharyngeal nerve, gland nerve number nine. This is the parasympathetic. It goes sensory nerve supply for the gland itself by the auriculotemporal nerve and for its capsule by the great auricular nerve which is again in cervical 2 and cervical 3 and in the superficial fat. This is by far the common thing about the parotid gland. And the other thing is the نكمل ال digestive system احنا المرة اللي فاتت وقفنا عند الريكتم شرح ده فناخد الريكتم زي ما انتم عارفين ان الريكتم is a continuation of the sigmoid colon لو ده lateral view of the sacrum and this is the tip of the coccyx. This is the sacrum tip of the coccyx. At the level of the sacral three. Sacral three, you know, sacrum from five sacral segments. The sacral segment three, the sigmoid colons end in front of S3 and the rectum begins. The rectum, it ends one centimeter in front of the tip of the coccyx by turning backward and downward to form the anal canal. So the rectum starts at S3 and it, it ends in front of the tip of the coccyx at this anorectal junction. This anorectal junction is pulled forward by a muscle comes from the pubic bone and surround it. This muscle is called the bubo rectalis muscle. It comes from the pubic bone to 
the endoectal junction. It maintained this acute angle of endoectal junction. Damage of this pubic muscle will damage this angle and may uh, will lead to incontinence. Incontinence of stool. The patient will defecate involuntary incontinence of feces. The pubic muscle. You'll find the rectum has a curve, lateral curve. And if you look to the front of the rectum, or the anterior surface of the rectum, you'll find this anterior surface is not straight. You'll find three flexures. Two to the left, and one flexure on the right side. These flexures. And these flexures correspond internally to the elvis, which raises the mucosa of the inner surface of the rectum to form the anal valve or rectal valves, or valves of Houston, or transverse folds of the rectum. Type. اللي بيفرق ما بين ده سيجمويد كولون وده ريكتم نمبر 1 سيجمويد في تينيا كولاي ريكتم ما فيش تينيا كولاي المصر كلها وان كوت دي في سيركيليشن ده ما فيش سيركيليشن هنا في ابنس وبلايك هنا ما فيش ابنس وبلايك السيجمويد كولون هاز ا بيلفيك ميزو كولون لكن ريكتم داز نوت هاف ا ميزنتري بالنسبة لي البروتينية الكفرنج اوف ذا ريكتم هلاقي الريكتم اسمه الابر سيرد الابر سيرد از كفرد انتيريورلي اند اون لاترال سايد باي ذا بريتونيم ذا ميدل سيرد از كفرد اونلي انتيريورلي ذا لور سيرد از نوت كفرد ات اول ويز بريتونيم ذا ريليشن اوف ذا ريكتم ريكتم هاز ذا سيم ريليشن بوستيريورلي ان ميل اند فيميل But its anterior relation differs in male and female. The posterior relation of the rectum in male and female, I'll find the sacrum. And in front of the sacrum, the bariformis muscle. And In front of the bariformis muscle, the formation of the sacral plexus. The sacral plexus which supply the lower limb. It lies posterior to the rectum. This is why if there is a carcinoma of the rectum, this carcinoma can invade the sacral plexus, leading to pain along the distribution of the sciatic nerve, what's called sciatica. Along the back of the thigh, the back of the leg, and the foot. So in any case of sciatica, the patient should, you should do BR examination, bare rectal examination, to examine the rectum for a possibility of carcinoma. Carcinoma can do one of the causes of sciatica or pain along the sciatic nerve. The most important also is that behind the rectum, I will find the superior rectal artery has a posterior relation to the rectum. Anterior relation of the rectum. Anterior relation, it differs if there is a male or a female. In case of males, I'll find the urinary bladder. This is the urinary bladder. And its apex lies on the prostate. And this is the prostatic urethra. And this is the pelvic diaphragm. Membranous urethra and then bulbal urethra. This will be discussed in detail in 
the joint urinary system. And here is the rectum. And this is the anal canal. I will find in male, the upper two thirds of the rectum is related to a pouch between the bladder and the rectum. This pouch is called rectovasical pouch. Rectovasical pouch. This is the upper two thirds of the rectum. The lower third of the rectum is devoid of peritoneum because the peritoneum comes from the bladder, is reflected here to the rectum. So the lower third, no peritoneum, but related to the base of the bladder. The bladder base. And related to the prostate. The bladder base in May, it contains seminal vesicles and the vast difference, the seminal, the vesicle, and the vase. So simply, until to the rectum, I'll find the base of the bladder, and the structure of the right posterior is the seminal vesicle and the vase. I'll find the prostate, it's important, because you can examine the prostate by doing BR, the patient, and you can feel the prostate, you can estimate the size, you can estimate the enlargement, and you can feel cancer, uh, prostate through the BR examination because the prostate lies immediately in front of the ampulla of the rectum. And the ampulla is the widest lower part of the rectum. This is called the ampulla of the rectum. So this is by far the commonest relation anteriorly. In female, I'll find here this is the urinary bladder and this is the female urethra. And then I'll find this is the vagina, and this is the cervix, this is the uterus, and this is the posterior wall of the vagina, and this is the rectum. And this is the anal canal. I'll find the upper two thirds of the rectum in female is dated to this pouch. And this pouch is called the Douglas pouch which contains small intestine or large intestine. The lower side of the rectum is to the vagina posteriorly. To the vagina posteriorly. This is the relation, anterior relation and posterior relation in male and the posterior relation are the same in male and female. The blood supply of the rectum. Blood supply of the rectum comes through three main sources. This is the superior rectal artery. The superior rectal artery is a continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery. The inferior mesenteric artery, after crossing the left common carotid, common uh, iliac artery, it becomes the superior rectal which passes on the posterior surface of the rectum and divides into left branch and right branch. The right branch divides into anterior branch and posterior branch. The second artery is the middle rectal artery. The middle rectal artery is a branch from the internal iliac artery. And this artery supplies the muscle coat, mainly the muscle coat of the rectum. And the other one is the inferior rectal artery. Really the inferior rectal artery is really to the anal canal, the inferior rectal artery a branch from the internal bodendal artery, which is a branch from the internal iliac artery. This is the arterial supply of the rectum, the venous drainage. It passes with this artery, it's a vein. And this is the superior rectal vein. The superior rectal vein, it passes to the inferior mesenteric vein. And this inferior mesenteric vein passes to the splenic vein, which form the portal vein. So this subirectal vein is a portal vein. And also the middle rectal vein, which passes to the internal iliac vein. And this is the inferior rectal vein, which goes to the internal bodendal and to the inferior, but also to the internal iliac vein. So we'll find one portal and two systemic veins. And there is anastomosis between them, as you know. There are many systemic anastomosis at the upper half of the anal canal. 
and if there is a portal hypertension, this uh, uh, anastomose becomes enlarged and form biles or rectal varices. We have discussed it, I think, in a portal vein and portal systemic anastomose. The lymphatic drainage of the rectum is also important. Most of the rectum, most of the rectum, its lymphatic drain passes upwards to the inferior mesenteric lymph node at the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery. Most of lymphatics passes upward. Few lymphatics passes to the internal iliac lymph node. Like in the main lymphatic drainage is upward to the inferior mesenteric lymph node. In any case of carcinoma of the rectum, inferior mesenteric lymph node should be removed. Another thing for the rectum, uh, this is the mucosa of the rectum, and you know the mucosa and submucosa and then musculosa. If there is the mucosa will protrude downward into the inner canal, this is called prolapse of the rectum. And this is called a partial prolapse. If the mucosa only passes through the anal canal. But if the mucosa and the underlying musculosa, the whole wall of the rectum, invaginated and passes through the anal canal and may pass outside through the anus, this is called complete prolapse. Complete uh, prolapse. This is by far the commonest thing about the rectum and what we are interested in for this rectum. The most important thing is the anal canal. You know, the anal canal, it starts in front of the tip of the coccyx by passing downwards and backwards and make an angle with the rectum, the rectum, uh, uh, the anorectal angle, which is maintained by the buporectalis muscle. These things we have discussed just now. What's important for us is that the inner canal has uh, two halves, is divided into an upper half. This is the inner canal. It divides into an upper half and lower half. The upper half usually endodermal in origin because it's a part of the hind gut. However, the, upper, the lower half is ectodermal in origin because it comes from the proctodium, from the skin. And this is the proctodial membrane which separates the upper half from the lower half. This proctodial membrane will rupture so that the continuity of the upper half and lower half is maintained. If not ruptured, it is imperforate anus due to the persistence of this proctodial membrane. Like it usually rupture. The upper half of the anal canal is endodermal in origin. It is covered by columnar epithelium, like the hind gut. It is not sensitive to pain at all but sensitive to stretch. It is supplied by the autonomic nervous sensation بتاعه. عشان كده it is insensitive to pain. The upper half of the anal canal. Uh, the upper half. It's supplied by the superior rectal artery. And the superior rectal artery gives the left branch and the right branch. And the right branch gives the anterior branch and posterior branch. So this is the upper half, endodermal, insensitive to pain but sensitive to stretch, supplied by autonomic nerves, is supplied mainly by the superior rectal artery and drained by the superior rectal vein. So it's supplied mainly by portal blood. The lower half, it is derived from the skin, as can get it an ectodermal in origin, is supplied by somatic nerve, the inferior rectal nerve 
inferior rectal nerve. This is why the lower half of the rectal is very sensitive to pain temperature, very sensitive to pain. It's also supplied, it's covered by stratified squamous epithelium because it's near to the skin. It is ectodermal in origin. It's supplied by the inferior has an inferior rectal artery, which is a branch from the internal pudendal, a branch from the internal iliac, inferior rectal artery, and the drain by the inferior rectal vein, which passes to the internal iliac lymph node. Inferior. This is why this is a systemic uh, vein. This is a portal vein, and portosystemic anastomosis will occur at the upper half of the anal canal between the superior rectal vein and the inferior rectal vein. Superior is portal and the inferior is systemic. And if enlargement of this anastomosis, it will lead to piles of rectal varices. The anal canal has a sphincter, the anal sphincter. And the anal sphincter is divided into two parts. Internal anal sphincter with external anal sphincter. The internal inner sphincter is just nothing but it is enlargement of the inner circular layer which can cover the rectum. It becomes enlarged and forms the internal internal sphincter, inner sphincter. So the internal inner sphincter it is a smooth muscle, supply by autonomic nerves, involuntary muscle. It is nothing but a enlargement or of the inner circular layer. And this is the internal. The external one is a striated muscle. It is divided into subcutaneous, superficial, and the deep parts. Subcutaneous, superficial, and deep parts. This is the external inner sphincter. The external sphincter is a striated muscle. It is a voluntary muscle. It is supplied by the somatic nerve. It is supplied by the inferior rectal nerve. The inferior rectal nerve supplies the external. The inferior rectal nerve supplies the external number one. External inner sphincter. And supplies the mucous membrane of the lower half of the anal canal. Number two. And supplies the skin, the very anal skin. This is why the very anal skin and the lower half of the anal canal is very sensitive to pain and also supply the external anal sphincter. If we are going to damage the internal anal sphincter, nothing will happen. No permanent incontinence will occur. If I damage the external anal sphincter, no permanent damage, no permanent incontinence will occur. But you know at this junction, this is the internal inner sphincter. This is the, the deep part of the external inner sphincter. Here is the buprorectalis muscle is attached to the rectum. You remember that the buprorectalis muscle, this is the rectum, and this is the inner canal, and this is the buprorectalis muscle. Maintain this angle. So at this anu rectal junction, the buprorectalis muscle lies. The buprorectalis. The buprorectalis muscle and the deep part of the external inner sphincter together with the internal inner sphincter form a ring around the end rectal junction, form a ring. And this thing can be palpated by BR examination and it's called anu rectal ring. This ring is important. If there is damage of this ring, permanent incontinence can occur permanent incontinence will occur. If I damage the inrector, the inrector ring is formed by the buprorectalis muscle, the deep part of the external anal sphincter, and the, the, the uh, internal anal sphincter. But damage of the internal or the external alone will not do, will not produce permanent incontinence. The relation of the anal canal in male and the female, it differs anteriorly. In male, anteriorly, it is related to what's called urogenital diaphragm and the bulb of the penis.
and the perineal membrane. The perineal membrane is the fibromuscular membrane, perineal membrane. This is in male. In female, I'll find the inner canal is in front of the vagina and separates from the vagina by also the perineal body. This is the vagina and this is the perineal body in female. This is the anterior relation. But posterior relations are the same because he'll be with the sacrum and this is the coccyx. And the posterior to the inner canal, there is an anococcygeal body, which is an anococcygeal body, which is a fibro fatty muscular body. This is the relation of the inner canal in front of the male bulb of the penis and your genital diaphragm. You will discuss it in the perineum. But in female, I will find vagina in front of it and the perineal body lies also in front of it. And the posterior relations are the same. It is the anococcygeal body or rafi. What's important in the inner canal also is applied anatomy, which is very important. Sometimes if there is severe constipation and chronic constipation, the hard stool can lead to injury to the lower half of the inner canal and make cut in the skin. Has a cut in the skin, it lies in the middle, lying posteriorly in the lower half of the anal canal. And this is called the anal fissure. The inner fissure is commonly posteriorly. Yeah, and the inner canal, uh -huh. the anteriorly, the posteriorly, the cut will be in the posterior, in the middle line, due to hard stool will injure the mucous membrane of the lower half, making this inner fissure. So this inner fissure is very painful because it lies in the lower half of the inner canal, which is very sensitive to pain. This is the anal fissure. The anal fissure could be anteriorly. Like this is not common. Like in the commonest, it is a fissure, discontinuation of the skin, injury to the mucous membrane of the middle of the posterior surface of the anal canal in the lower half. I think it is very painful condition. Especially after defecation, we find severe pain in the anal region. This is what's called the fissure. Sometimes there is a fistula, which is very common. Very anal fistula, nasur. Very anal fistula. Fistula means there is a track. We'll have two opening. One open on the skin and the other opening inside. This is called the fistula. For example, if I'll find this track like that, track which has opening on the skin and opening on the mucous membrane inside. This is called perianal fistula. The perianal fistula is, has two major types. If the internal opening of the fistula lies below the rectal ring, this is called low fistula. But if the internal opening in the rectum above the inrectal ring, this is called a high fistula. And the fistula will find nothing except there's an opening beside the anal canal. And the patient usually complain of soiling his inner or his uh, underwear by bloody mucus secretions from this fistula. There is no pain in fistula. لكن this charge بيجي نازل من الفتحة ده يعمل الهدوم الداخلية بتاعه ده الايه الفستلة في بري انا الابسس خراج 
الخوراك ده ممكن يكون ده البري ان الابسس بري ان الابسس ده ابسس حوالين الانس ممكن يكون هذا الابسس ساب ميوكس تحت الميوكس من برين ساب ميوكس ممكن يكون هذا الابسس ساب كيوتينيس تحت السكين من بره ممكن يكون في الاسكو يكتر فصها اللي هي على جانبي الانا الكنال لان الانا الكنال لاترالي ليتد لفصة اسمها انو ريكتال فصة فممكن يكون ايه انو الانو الاسكو ريكتال فصة it's called the sq rectal fossa this fossa may contain an abscess so it's called sq rectal sq rectal abscess so these are types of the perianal abscesses and this perianal abscesses is the cause of this fistula because if there is abscess here the abscess will open to the inside and will open to the outside forming the fistula So the perianal abscess is the cause of this perianal uh, fistula. The important thing also is biles. We have two types of biles, internal biles and external biles. If this is the rectum and this is the anal canal. And this is the upper half of the inner canal, and this is the lower half of the inner canal. And this is the mucosa of the upper half. The superior rectal vein, superior rectal vein, which can match with the superior rectal artery, it has two branches, one anterior, one to the left, and one to the right. The right gives a posterior branch and anterior branch. If we have cut section in this area, this area will be like that. And the subrectal vein has a right branch, a left branch. The right branch gives the anterior branch and the posterior branch. If we look to this distribution, uh, this is an hour, this is at Nasher, دي الساعة واحدة اثنين أبص ألاقي إن الليفت برانش مينلي عند الساعة ثلاثة الأنتيور برانش عند الساعة سبعة ده عند الساعة حداشر ودي ليه أهمية كتيرة جدا لما عيان بيجي له كرونيك كونستيبيشن أو كرونيك ستريننج فالبريشر جوه السوبير ريكتال فين ده هوت ويل إنكريز أور كارسنوما أوف ذا ريكتم ويل كومبريز ذيس فين سو فين بيكمز دايليتر or portal hypertension or واحدة pregnant فالuterus enlarged compress this vein أبص تلاقي هذه الفين زي تحت الميكوزة becomes enlarged وتورشت وتجزق الميكوزة قدامها وعملا لي what's called the internal biles this is the internal biles البواسير الداخلية so The internal bile arises from the upper half of the inner canal. عشان كده the internal bile is painless. لأنها خارجة من area ما فيهاش sensory somatic nerve. عشان كده the internal bile is كلها painless. It's covered by the mucous membrane of the upper half. It is a tributary of the superior rectal vein. It has four stages. Stage one, it is confined to the inner canal. Stage two, it arises, it protrudes during the fixation from the inner canal, but retains again. Number three, it protrudes through the inner canal during the fixation, and the patient retains it by his hand. The fourth one is permanent protrusion from the inner canal. This is the four stages. The main complaint of this patient is bleeding. بوست ديفيكيشن بليدنج يبص يلاقي الحمام مليان دم بقع دم ودم برايت ريد لان ده دم فريش لان هذا الفين الفين اللي جوه اهوت ديورنج سيفير كونستيبيشن والرابشر 
so blood will come bleeding from the anal canal. Will blood be bright red or both defecation? This is a very but it is painless. Painless. Like in a fissure, severe pain during defecation. And after defecation. In the fissure there is no pain. Like in here, would be painless. Unless complicated, you have a inflammation, has a fast robust, like in normally painless. The lower half of the inner canal is drained by the inferior rectal vein. If there is chronic constipation, chronic staining, and there is a formation of accumulation of blood here under the skin, this is called external biles. In external biles, the patient during defecation, during staining, during coughing, a sudden increase in intra-abdominal pressure, he suddenly feel a swelling beside the anus. And this swelling is painful. The anotactal skin, which is supplied by the inferior rectal nerve, which is somatic nerve, the external bile is tributaries from the inferior rectal vein. Like an antenna cut in the rectal vein, like in the inferior. It appears as a swelling, sudden appearance of a swelling beside the inner canal, which is painful. This is the external bile, but the internal bile, this is painless uh, condition. Uh, stop.